Hello, Harrisonburg, and welcome to Midweek, a student-produced television talk show from JMU. Today, I'm Elvis Presley, usually known as Stefan Fogelman, the talk show host of Midweek, but I'm also known as the worst Elvis impersonator you've probably ever met. Today, we're going to discuss uh, everything to get you in the mood for the most fun holiday of the year, Halloween. We're going to start right now with Arlene and Glenn Reed from the Reed's Patch at the Dayton Farmer's Market in Dayton. Arlene and Glenn, thank you so much for coming out today. We're glad to be here. I'll bet you all are real busy right now. Yes. Fall is a big time for us at the market. What else? Uh, I want to get into, to, into your wares in just a minute, but are you open? Is the Dayton Farmer's Market open uh, every day of the year? Or? We're open all year round. We're open three days a week. We're open on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Uh, trying to make it a uni unique and special place for people to come. Uh, Arlene and I have the produce section uh, where our specialty is fresh fruits and vegetables and some fun things like pumpkins and gourds and uh, we bought a few of them here today but we had some fun down there. Now there's a lot of people out there watching. I know you probably wouldn't believe this but there are some people who don't know the difference between a pumpkin and a gourd. So could you just tell me, Arlene, uh, briefly the difference? I would believe that there are a lot of people who do not know the difference. It is something very easy to, to not know. Um, a pumpkin is something <coughs> you eat, a gourd you do not. Um, a gourd <coughs> is usually ornamental and hard. It'll, it'll keep sometimes indefinitely, especially if it's picked when the vine is mature, not green. Um, it would be somewhat of the squash family, the gourd would, and the pumpkin is obviously a pumpkin, I guess. Um, I'm not sure if there's a lot more difference there. But well, where did, I mean, how did people start using gourds for, for ornaments? Well, Have I'm they been around as long as the pilgrims? Or? I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of demand for them. Uh, decoration, Indian corn and, corn, uh, and gourds go together well. Uh, pumpkins, of course, everybody knows uh, pumpkin pies, for one thing. These little guys right here uh, are what they call a sugar pie pumpkin. Uh, they're good for turning into pumpkin pies if they're not painted. <laughs> <laughs> the other variety that we carry at the Dayton Farmer's Market is bred specially for uh, jack-o'-lanterns. It's a tall pumpkin, gives you a nice, smooth face. I don't have one of those along today with us, but uh, <coughs> we decided we'd put some faces on some different things. Uh, gourds like you're holding in your hand there. Uh, we have a local artist, a friend of Arlene's, who uh, paints, and she'll paint on just about anything, and we've taken some gourds up to her. For two years now, we've been doing this, and each one develops a little personality when she gets, gets the brush and, and gets to work on it with the paint. Uh, this year, we've tried uh, taking some of our sugar pie pumpkins, and instead of turning them into pies, uh, we're painting little faces and scenes on those. We've got squirrels and cats and Canadian geese <laughs> and <laughs> all kinds of things for fall. Is this the first year you've done this then? With the pumpkins, it's the first year. They're gorgeous. I mean, I, it seems like something that uh, somebody would have thought of a long time ago, but I, I've, as I said before, I had never seen this before until today, uh, and I think they're really beautiful. Uh, these, I, I want you to tell me some of your prices on these. People might think that these things are... Uh, they're all a work of art, so they might think that they're, they're terribly expensive. Can you zoom up on one of these babies right here? Those particular ones that you have right there uh, will go for under $2. Uh, we've got lots of little gourds, but just a few with some faces on it, and take some time to paint them. Uh, so under $2 for him, and roughly $3 for uh, a young lady with a bonnet like this. My goodness, I, that, that to me is exquisite. And, and how long did you say it takes for her to do something like that? Usually about a half an hour to paint one like this size uh, or like the one you're holding in your hand. Um, 45 minutes at the most. I think this is amazing. Uh, this one is, I've never seen anything like it. Now, can you tell me, uh, these gourds, do they come in all different sizes and shapes like pumpkins? Because, I mean, look, look at the way this is almost looks like it was made for uh, made for painting, <laughs> made for designing. What kind of gourd is this? It's just a gourd. I uh, guess it doesn't have a special name. This is what that was before it was painted. It's just simply a gourd with no personality, no name, nothing. No, it's and actually an ugly looking exactly. vegetable. And, <laughs> and these are gorgeous. Our artist looks at it, 
and says, well, that is going to be sometimes a pig. I do not have any pigs today. <laughs> sometimes that would make a do a, an adorable pig. Sometimes she'll say, oh, it'll make a good little girl's face. Um, sometimes, you know, just something very off the wall, like a flower. Um, you can, she uses her imagination. We tell her we want her imagination to just flow, that whatever she can come up with, we do try to help give her some ideas, but we just let her flow. I think that's great. Well, let me, uh, let me just ask you, where do you get your gourds? Or have you already answered that? Well, uh, I think I've asked we try to get things locally grown. For uh, Most of the things we sell at our store, when in season, we want them locally grown. As far as pumpkins and gourds, uh, a lot of the gourds came from people right down in Dayton, uh, right around the market there. And the fun part about gourds is uh, you order seeds from the seed company, and they send you a pack, and you plant them and wait to see what happens. They come out all different sizes, different shapes. As you can see here, there's a, a variety of shapes here. They come with crooked necks and wild colors like oranges and greens and yellows sometimes. So we get a, a multitude of different things with gourds. Uh, pumpkins, uh, we have a primarily one grower we buy from, and he's located down near Weir's Cave. Uh, I take my truck down to the patch and get out there and load pumpkins right in the field with them and bring them back. Do you just, uh, as with gourds, and do you go and pick up gourds from him too? Yeah. And I do you, uh, when you do that, do you um, look for any particular sizes and shapes? Do you look for any funny shapes or do you uh, just go ahead and take what he's got? I'll tell you, just take them as they come. Uh, everything that gets in the way gets loaded on the truck. <laughs> and then we do the sifting when we come back. Um, we actually let the, the painter, the artist, come in and uh, she looks at the gourds and says, I'd like to take this one and that one, and she takes a basket full home at a time. Uh, we gave her 10 pumpkins uh, a couple weeks ago, and she took them home and called us at, what, 7 o'clock the next morning and said, hey, they're ready to go. So that she, is something. She really enjoys it. We I'm, try to make Halloween fun, too. This is fun, and you say that these, will, these can last? Yes, if the gourd is not picked while the vine is too green, it will keep indefinitely, sometimes years, some... Depends to where you put it, like you can't just stick it in a refrigerator or somewhere like that where there's a lot of moisture. Mm -hmm. It certainly would not belong there. Um, a cool, dry place, um, dry ahead of anything. You don't want to keep it in the hot sun. It will fade and the color will turn. Right. I wanted to mention, too, that a lot of the gourds that we buy are children's projects. We have a lot of local children from the Dayton area who plant these uh, for a little project of their own. Some of them are handicapped. A lot of the children are not, but that's primarily where we try to buy them, then we fill out with some of the larger um, growers who might have some as a sideline. So. Well, you know, I was just thinking that uh, this thing, if it, if it takes, you say, about 20 minutes to paint something yes. like this, and uh, you only charge $2 for it, that's uh, quite a deal, and, it, and it's going to last. What is the name of, of the lady who paints these? The girl that, or the lady that paints them's name is Eva Rohr, and she lives in Dayton. Um, she's just a very gentle person. You can tell by the personality on you her, sure on the, especially on the eyes of each one of the little um, people, gourds as we call them, or gourd heads. These are called gourd heads, incidentally. Gourd heads. Um, yes. Um, <laughs> we've had a lot of fun with that, too. Um, she's a very, very private person, uh, very shy, very modest, and uh, I don't know, it's just a way for her to express some of her artistic talents. Right. She's untrained or self-taught, I should say. Self-taught, she is trained. It certainly is, yeah, she certainly did, but um, Eva Rohr is the lady's name. Thank you very much. I, um, I'm just, I think it's a great gift because I uh, just carved a jack-o'-lantern on, I think it was Monday, and uh, last Monday, and when I came home for this weekend, I found that the jack-o'-lantern was, it, it had already melted, yeah. how, they, how they do. So these things, to last for such a long time, and they, they look so, so good. Uh, we'll have to go down and, and visit you down there. When do you, when do you all uh, liquidate these things? When do you? Oh, we, uh, we try to keep them all fall. We sort of change the theme as the season goes along. Right now we're in Halloween, so we've got cats and, and uh, fall scenes on the pumpkins and things like that. But uh, we'll transition some of the gourd heads into uh, pilgrims, and then uh, hopefully right. Santa Claus will come along with, okay. uh, with a gourd head or two. We're going to be right back, and uh, thank you. You do stay tuned. What was your all-time best Halloween costume, and describe it? I was Wonder Woman, and <laughs> I had like a little 
leotard on and had stars on it. It was just like the Wonder Woman costume. Mm -hmm. I was a ballerina. It was like third grade. <laughs> I'd have to say uh, Ace of Spades. It's like, you know, nice box came over Ace of Spades. It was, it was a good costume. I dressed up as a nerd once. <laughs> Creased back my hair, horn rim glasses, the whole bit. This is...